Hello again and welcome to another video from the Marketing Study Guide. In this video I'm going to have a look at the two types of customer lifetime value calculations. One is the very simple ballpark back of the envelope type calculation and the other one is a more complete uh, version of customer lifetime value which is far more accurate. Uh, my name is Jeff and I'm a long time marketing lecturer and practitioner. Just to start out with, we're going to look at for new customers, so we'll include a um, acquisition cost. So to do it very simply, this is the ballpark method. We simply work out how much profit a customer contributes per year on average. We then look at how long they're going to be a customer for us, again on average. Take off the acquisition cost, the average one, and we work out our lifetime value. So as a, as a calculation, let's say we make $1,000 per year per customer. Um, the average customer lasts about three years, so it gives us $3,000 of profit. We take off the acquisition cost, in this case it's $1,200, and our average customer lifetime value is $1,800. Okay, so that's a very simple calculation. You can even do that uh, manually uh, by pen and paper. And if you want to work out how you work this number out, there's another video on converting retention rate into to that number. When we look at the more complete version of customer lifetime value, we need to take into account that the customer relationship changes. Um, the prior one just ex assumes that everything's static, nothing changes. Um, what we have in place is usually upselling and cross-selling programs. So customer profitability, uh, they often come in on a, on a smaller product and we try to sell them more over time. So we try to manage up that profit. Um, likewise with the retention period, how long they're with us. Um, obviously in the first year a lot of customers leave because we don't quite fit them, but the ones that stay will stay a fair bit longer. So we should have this rising retention rate and these numbers should should go up over time. So we, we fine tune them. Um, we work, that gives us our profit over time and we need to discount that because some of these profitability numbers could go 5, 10, 15 years into the future, we could have, depending on the business, we could have long-term customers. So we need to uh, have some sort of discount, discounted cash flows. And then we take off our acquisition costs as before, and that gives us our lifetime value. So I'm going to build in some assumptions. I'm going to use the prior example we had and just change it a little bit. So before we had an average profit of $1,000. And this time I'm going to say a new one that came in and we make $800. Year two, we make $1,000. Year three and beyond, we make $1,200. So that still averages close to 1000 but we've got more valuable customers over time. And before, from a three-year uh, average lifetime of each customer, that would be actually 0.67 retention rate. So again, I've sort of balanced that out to say, in the first year, we only retain 60%. So there's 40% who go, no, not happy, I'll go somewhere else. But the ones that are happy, their retention rate will go up. So in year two, uh, become 75%, then 80%, and then 80% ongoing. And I'm just using a discounted rate of 5% because interest rates are, uh, are a little bit low and the return on some businesses is low. You can use 5% or 10%. Usually there's a uh, a discount factor in, inside your company, sometimes referred to as a hurdle rate or an investment rate. And no changes down here. So the formula changes here, and I've done the calculations or the assumptions. So I've just pulled this off a, a template I have on, on online for free, a, a CLV template. And I've done the, the basic one here. So we saw that number before, 1800. Uh, we kept them for three years and we take out the acquisition costs, we, our profit is 3000 So we worked that out before, and our return on marketing investment is uh, 1550%, and with or without discounting, because I'm not using discounting, so it, it doesn't change. Um, so that means we, we spent $1,200, and we got a net $1,800 back, so we've got 100% of our money back, plus another 50%, that's how we get to that 150 Um and this is the second calculation with the assumptions built in. And as you can see, we get a different set of numbers. Our acquisition, taking out the acquisition costs, which we should, are uh, 2,065. 
So it's actually $265 more. And it says we we'll actually keep them longer and we get a better return on, on investment, etc. So if you're after a ballpark number, this is okay. If you want a precise number and, and you're talking about lots of customers and substantially marketing investments, you probably have to go here. But as I said, this can be done via a template that's in the link below. And just to explain what's happening, uh, this is the basic calculation. I've just done it over a series of years. Uh, we were making $1,000. In the second year, we dropped down because we lose a third of our customers. So now it's you know $670 per, per cohort of that group, and that keeps dropping. What's happening here, this is our full calculation. It starts lower because I've discounted it and I only started at $800. And then I went to, to 1000 and then 1200 So what happened here is we are upselling. We are increasing our, our margin from 800 to 1000 to 1200 ongoing. But we've also taken the big hit of 40% of customers leaving uh, and then we're retaining. So our retention rate's gone up as well. So over time, uh, this calculation works out uh, more accurately because it's reflective of future customer behavior. Here is just an estimate. So you can see that they're relatively close uh, over time, but depending on the importance of the calculation to the company. So this is a, a, just a comparison again. The 1800 we worked out before. Here, 800, 1200. Lifetime period, edging up. Starting slower, but edging up and the 5% discount rate and gives us, um, you know, a substantially different, you know, more than a 10% increase in, in customer lifetime value. So hopefully that was helpful. Please check out my other videos on YouTube and please subscribe to the channel.